Hey everybody, it's Peter from the Kia Hyundai channel. Welcome to our live video series. Today we are taking a look at the Hyundai Palisade Essential. This is the entry-level version and I haven't actually reviewed it before and I didn't think I'd be as impressed with it as I am. So for an entry-level vehicle, you always have to make choices about what to include and what not to include. They did a lot of things right one thing wrong. So we'll talk about that in this video. So here's how this works. We do a live video every single weekday at two o'clock Eastern time. If you're not live with us right now, you can you can skip ahead if you want to the three minute mark. Uh, that'll be where the content starts. In the meantime, we'll let our live audience join. I'm going to talk about some news and some notes, and I'm going to show you how to join us live if that's what you want to do. So let me jump in here. All right, down here, this is our YouTube channel. And if you want to join us live, you can very simply come to our channel. And if you look at it on a regular day, you'll see a video down there. But if you refresh the page at exactly two o'clock, which is what we're gonna do right now, you can refresh the page and you will see that that live or that regular video is replaced by our live video. You're gonna click into that. When you do that, you're gonna have to watch an ad, apparently for, uh, oh, I don't know what that's for. Oh, it's a Dyson. All right, skipping the ads. All right, first of all, if you want to uh, buy a car from us, someone reach out to us from Collingwood. We set them up with our Owen Sound store. We've had people come here and Brantford Hyundai all the time. There are three dealerships that support us. Brantford Hyundai, Brantford Kia, and Owen Sound Hyundai. So if you are interested in buying a car anywhere in Ontario, we can help you out. We can take care of you. So you can reach out to me just like a number of people have. Uh, actually, already today, we've had a number of people do that. And uh, we'll help set you up and do everything we can for you. And we'll treat you like family. So there's that. All right, this morning on Instagram, usually I put my Instagram sheet out here. It's not uh, on there. Somebody can write it in the comments for me if you want of uh, how to reach me. It's at Peter Kia Hyundai channel on Instagram. Uh, there's some dashes in there, I believe, or underscores, I guess, underscores. Anyways, um, I put out on that this morning that we had some big news coming today and hasn't happened yet. Uh, so probably that big news will happen tomorrow. So we'll just leave it like that. And uh, tomorrow morning, I expect to do a pretty fun video. I don't know if we'll go live with it. Maybe we will. Uh, we'll make a decision about that tomorrow morning, but uh, some stuff coming up tomorrow, which I think a lot of you have been waiting for, so we'll just leave it at that. Uh, this video, or no, yesterday's video. Yesterday we talked about um, the Santa Cruz and the Telluride, which was kind of a weird video, and um, I liked it. But then we went outside in the snow yesterday with my Santa Cruz, and we did a tires versus technology uh, video. So in the snow, winter tires and technology, and it actually surprised me. I actually had to re-edit my point of view on that because uh, the technology was so, so good. So I encourage you to watch that. It's about 12 minutes long. It's on our channel, uh, Tires versus Technology. You'll see a white Santa Cruz with me looking like that on it. And uh, that's how we do it. All right, uh, 10 seconds to go. If you haven't hit the like button yet and you're a regular, do me a favor, hit the like button. If you're not a regular, I'm gonna try to earn your like at some point in this video. So be f feel free to hit that if I've earned it at any point. All right, here we go. Three minute mark. Hey everybody, it's Peter from the Kia Hyundai channel. We have a Hyundai in front of a Kia sign because we're at our Brantford Kia studio. We may actually, for Hyundai videos, change that up someday and put some Hyundai sign in front, but we'll see how that goes. This is the Palisade. Palisade's been around for a while. The entry-level model in Canada here where we film is called the Essential Model. And like I said off the top of the video, it kind of impressed me. You never know what to expect from an entry-level vehicle because of the cuts you have to make uh, in order to hit a price point or whatever you're trying to do with it. And I think they kind of nailed it. There's only one issue I have with it, and it's right here. I would have liked to see a push button start on this car. Uh, I get that, you know, everything's trying to hit a price point, and this makes some sense. And there's nothing wrong with this. This is still a nice key fob, fits in your pocket. But it is something that I will not be able to keep in my pocket for the entire video. And purely from a selfish point of view, that's less convenient for me. And it may be less convenient for you. But if you're buying this car, I think you'll be pretty impressed with what you actually get in the vehicle. Because again, everything is a compromise when you try to make a base level vehicle. And uh, one thing I will say is that although the Palisade and the Kia Telluride share a platform, they're not actually made in the same country even. This is made in uh, Korea and the Telluride is made in the States. And the Telluride has no trim that really directly compares with this. So um, at least not in my books anyways, uh, entry level t uh, Telluride is sort of a step above this and you can move several steps up in the Palisade lineup as well. So let's talk about this car, what we have here today. I actually really like reviewing base models. Um, that sounds crazy to some people. Most auto reviewers, they like all the tech and sure, I like all the tech as well, but I really enjoy reviewing base models because we can talk about what's in it and be aware of what's not. And I think that those are always tough decisions to make. So. What we're gonna do is a full review of this vehicle. We're gonna talk about inside out. I am gonna sit in the front, middle, and third row seats because I think one of the key reasons you're gonna buy this vehicle is because of the third row seats. So I think it's important to get in there. And um, 
Then we're also going to talk trunk space, lighting, all kinds of other stuff, and let's dig into it right now. So, one thing I like, this is just a silly little thing, but you can see a lot of the vehicles, I don't have time to get them perfectly clean, and frankly, I wouldn't have been able to clean this one as well as uh, it is right now with the weather outside and that kind of thing. So when we take it in from another dealership, it's always a little tough. You can see it's been cleaned up. One thing I like, though, is these doors, in this kind of weather, they wrap all the way around, and that doesn't matter the weather, they wrap all around whether there's good weather or not. But the bigger point is, what happens in this kind of weather is the bottom side of your car gets very dirty, but on this car, it's not dirty. And that's because the door covers all the way around. And this is a nice little rubber seal here. Now this came probably out of a detail bay. There is some humidity and moisture in there. But the point is they don't get dirty because the actual door wraps around. And when you're a shorter person, especially, but even myself at, you know, six feet tall, when I get out of taller vehicles, sometimes I drag my pant leg along the side of the car there it doesn't get dirty because it's covered and it stays clean, which is just a simple little design detail that makes a lot of sense. All right, jumping in here, I'm gonna pull out my key, which again, isn't the end of the world. It is what it is. All right, if I can get it in with my left hand, there we go. Turning the vehicle to the on position, but we're not gonna start it up. And I wanna show you one thing that's pretty cool that will turn off. Oh, it did turn off already. This is whoever is seat belted. So if I was to start the car and start driving away, you'll have all seven of these lights on. Now, I guess the center row seats maybe don't have it. There are eight seats in this car, so there's six plus one. Um, anyways, they do light up to tell you that seat belts are not on, and uh, that's kind of cool to have that little thing. It does turn off. I was going to try to catch it while it's on. Over here, let's just turn all the climate systems off. We have a rear climate system on. I turned the front one off, but not the rear climate. I think that's a really good idea to have the rear climate system in here. So if we hit the rear climate system, we're going to turn it off for now. We'll turn that on again later. So I just want to keep it battery usage low on this car. I want you to ignore fuel efficiency numbers. This car was idling for me. It's going to get much better mileage than that. But I think what I do want to show you is this is a nice little display screen. Even though it's not, you know, glamorous, like the top end Palisade has a full uh, digital gauge cluster. This has a lot of information. You've got lane keeping assist. You've got driver tension level uh, detail. You've got a four wheel drive bar graph, which we showed yesterday in the video we talked about at the beginning of the video where we talked about tires versus technology. We had my Santa Cruz out in the snow yesterday. We show you how that four wheel drive bar graph kind of works. Tire pressure monitors here, the driver assistance settings, fuel efficiency, we're gonna ignore all these fuel efficiencies because we were idling, but there's your digital speedometer if you want it, you can hold it to switch it to miles per hour. And then you've got some drive mode information, which is all there. So again, a lot of the information you're gonna get on the full digital display is right here. Is it as pretty? No, but you want information at this point. So somebody says it needs a digital odometer. It has a digital odometer. See the 80 kilometers right down there? Uh, whoops, come on camera. There you go. 80 kilometers on the right. There's your digital odometer. If you think it needs a digital speedometer, yeah, but this is the decision they make, right? When they go from, um, uh, well, there's your digital speedometer, but you know, when they don't have the digital dash, that's because you have to make some compromises when you get down to a price point like this one. We'll show you the price point in a little bit here. So overall, just, you know, basic, good, clear gauges in here, but good information in the center there. We're at our rear climate system. We're going to turn that off. Nice thing about these 8-inch screens, and this is an 8-inch screen, is you do have wireless Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay. You cannot get wireless Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay in the larger screens here uh, that come with the higher trim models. So just a nice little feature that comes on the lower trim that doesn't come on the higher trims. My phone is, my watch is listening to us there. All right, over here, you get all the same technology or a lot of the same technology that I think is important on this car. You have a quiet mode here. What the quiet mode does is, let's just read it it turns the volume level to seven in the front speakers and mutes the rear speakers when I touch this. And what that means is if you have people in the back that are sleeping or maybe they're listening to their own music in their earbuds, uh, what you can do is allow them to listen to their music or allow them to sleep and just have your music here in the front and it's set to volume level seven. If you want your music a little louder than that, you can still turn it off from there, but it defaults to seven in the front and off in the back when you use the quiet mode, which is really nice in a family vehicle. I think that's something you're looking for. Rear climate, we already showed you. We'll get back to that in a little bit later. Um, then we have the setup menu here and we can go to uh, various things like the vehicle setup and you can customize a few other things like drive and terrain mode so we have that in Canada this just tells you you can give a detailed alert similar or off uh, basically what that means and we'll show that in a sec or we'll explain that in a second is uh, when you change the drive mode you can have a display up here climate settings down here automatic ventilation you can have so you can auto dehumidify and you can also um, rear climate controls you can set them up right there so again that's a there's a that's sort of a long way to get to the rear climate controls because we know, uh, where are we? Let's go back one more. 
you can just hit the, whoa, there we go. Oh boy, should have just done this. You can get the rear climate controls by just touching that there as well. Or you can just hit the rear climate control button down here because a lot of these screens have redundant buttons down here. Radio, media, this star button, I like to use that. to. You can customize that to a lot of different things. But I like to use that button to... Um, uh, to bring up your Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, especially if it's wireless, that's super convenient to do. But a lot of these, of course, are redundant buttons down there. And same thing here, you've got your climate control here. Now, this is a manual climate control instead of an auto climate control. So you do lose your dual zone function, and I think that's okay. I think you can you know, get everybody comfortable here, um, and you still have the rear climate, so you can set that a little bit different, or they can set that on their own. Um, but there we go. And then we come down here, and you see push button gear shifts, which some people think they're not going to like, but we'll talk about that in a second. Then you have a dial mode here for your drive modes, and you have the most advanced drive modes out of all of them. We have comfort, eco, sport, and smart, and then you go to train modes, you have snow, mud, and sand. There's not a vehicle in our lineup that has more drive modes and terrain modes than this Palisade right here. So even at the entry level, you're getting all of the technology that you would get if you paid for the top of the line Palisade, right here in your drive mode system. And same engine, same transmission. And of course, that means you can tow the same 5,000 pounds. What I like about the push button gear shift is it is cleaner. It does take a day or two to get used to this. So let's not kid ourselves. Auto reviewers absolutely hate push buttons. Why? Because auto reviewers have a new car every week, sometimes just for a day or two, sometimes for a whole week. And it takes them a while to learn new things. I used to be an auto reviewer. I'm allowed to make fun of them. Uh, what happens if you own this vehicle is after about a day and a half, you know exactly where all these buttons are. You look at them, you touch them without thinking, and it creates a cleaner, more open area here. If you had a big gear shift sticking out of here, it'd be harder to reach all this stuff. So it really is a feature that I quite like, um, even though I didn't think I would. Then down here, you have a big panel. You push this and open it up. It's, you can see it kind of just like slides super smooth, right? It doesn't bang or crash or anything else. And then you have a huge open spot here. So you could fit like an iPad in here. You could fit like gloves, a purse, whatever. There's also a space for a larger purse underneath there with 12 volt port and a USB port on the other side there. Uh, but what's nice about this is if you want your cup holders out, you're gonna push this button and in an instant, it zips out of there and push this button. In an instant, it zips out of there and you have cup holder space as well as still having some phone space down here. There's a USB port in here. I mentioned there's USB ports underneath there. There's also a USB port and a 12 volt port in the armrest here. I don't know if you can see. Uh, let me see if I can get closer here. Oh boy, I've got a little mount on this thing. Yeah, there we go. USB port, 12 volt port right there. USB port right there. Um, so you have that in there. And again, if you're looking for a place to put your sunglasses, they will fit nicely in that armrest piece right there. So really functional. You can't put your um, sunglasses on the top and the roof anymore. They've just kind of moved away from some of that on some of these vehicles, but you still have a spot there in your center console, which to be honest is where I've stuck my sunglasses for years. So it hasn't bothered me at all. All right, coming across the dash now the, to the steering wheel. This is where you see, okay, did we make some compromises? Because you didn't really. We looked yesterday at the Telluride in our video. The Telluride would be the top of the line, uh, top line Telluride, which is again, like the top line Palisade. It's the same controls here. So again, top line Palisade, you're gonna have not just the cruise control, but the smart cruise control here. Then you have the same uh, type of controls over here as well. You do have the auto headlights here. They are LED headlights as well. So we'll just sort of see for a second. I don't know. Yeah, the coloring doesn't work right. That's very white in real life, but on that wall, just for whatever reason on this camera looks yellow. But that is LED headlights. So we'll take a look at the lighting a little bit later. And you have your lane keep uh, system that you can turn on and off down here. Electronic parking brake is there because that also clears up your center console. Um, so really just kind of nice laid out design over here that I'm pretty big fan of. Overall... The one difference for me to get used to, cloth seats. It feels like everything I drive in this kind of price range does not have cloth seats. I'm perfect, personally a fan of cloth seats. I kind of like it. There's one big benefit with cloth seats and I'll show you right here. The rump roasters warm up way faster with cloth seats. So uh, you don't get as cold in the winter. You still have a steering wheel heater as, here as well and your passenger seat uh, heater as well. So rump roasters for the win, you have them here. You can hold them down to turn them all off if you want or you can tap, tap and tap to turn them off and the heated steering wheel as well. So really good drive modes, really good system here. And I think overall, if you are using this as a family vehicle, you're gonna find that it feels spacious. It feels not quite king of the road, but you certainly feel like 
you know, in charge on this road. It's not too big to drive, but it's not a small vehicle. And overall spaciousness is excellent. We're going to talk about back seat or middle row and rear seat in just a second. I think what we're going to do today is we're going to go to your questions a little bit earlier. So if you have questions, you can start writing them now if you haven't asked them yet. Then we're going to go middle row, rear row, um, trunk space, all kinds of things in this vehicle. And we'll go from there. So we got 57 people on. Let's go for 60 likes today. So um, 59 people on right now. So if you want to do it all together, it's kind of fun to watch what help happens with the sc screws with the YouTube algorithm. We go five, four, three, two, one. Let's all hit the like button now. And I guarantee if we all do that, or at least a whole bunch of us do that, we'll have a whole bunch of people join us in just a couple minutes here. So let's jump out here for a second. We'll turn that key to the off position and we'll go take some of your questions if you have any. I didn't see a lot of questions coming through early, so we're going to... Um, uh, yeah, we're going to see if there's any there, and if not, we'll just keep moving through. Okay, let me just put the mic down, or the camera down for two seconds so I can scroll through here. Uh, all right, can you think of another phone to Bluetooth while driving? Can you link another phone to Bluetooth while driving? That's a good question. On the 10 and a quarter inch screens, you can absolutely pair two phones. I don't believe you can pair two phones at the same time on these systems, so... I could be wrong. I have to look into the eight inch screens on this one, but I'll have to look into that. So I apologize for not having the answer on top of my screen. It used to be eight inch screens, no 10 inch screens. Yes, two phones could be paired, but um, I don't think you can on the eight inch. Uh, so that's maybe that's the answer. Uh, da, 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 da. Somebody's asking me about an early build issue on an early Palisade. I'm not aware of that issue. Um, somebody said it needs a digital odometer. I think we talked about that. It's a better key that does not allow thieves to get your car. Eh, I don't know. I, know. I think there's a lot of overridden. If thieves want your car, they can take your car. And, uh, you know, you always hear these things in the news, but it is what it is. Okay. Uh, also, I prefer cloth when you want to wear shorts and the car is parked in the sun literally every day. I did a whole letter thing and I hate it. Yeah, so that is true. Shorts, uh, if you're wearing shorts, cloth is nicer. All right, let's jump to the middle row seat now because I think if you're buying this vehicle... It's not all about the luxuries and the features so much, but I think that's important to know what you're buying, but I do think space is one of the key things you want to know, so let's just start talking about that. Now, this driver's seat, I have it set to where I would uh, sit. It is a manual driver's seat, so it doesn't move anywhere, but I'm six feet tall, so sitting behind here, there's going to be a lot of room. A couple things I like, my Santa Cruz has... Um, Hyundai Santa Cruz has cup holders in the door, but it only has one size. This one you have two sizes, which I think is better. So you have extra cup holders there and a bottle holder in the door. No bottle holders in the Santa Cruz either. So big win here over the Santa Cruz. Uh, who would I take the Palisades over the EV6? Totally different cars. Um, maybe I'd, I'd do both. Um, yeah, totally different cars. All right, so rear seat space. There are manual seats. We're going to show you how they work. There's some really cool th features on them. But overall, check this out. You don't really lose a lot coming down to this level. So we mentioned the cup, bottle holder down there, the cup holders there. Uh, you don't have heated seats back here, but you have cloth seats, so that's not gonna matter too much. Big pocket here, cell phone pocket right there, USB port on the back of the seat here. Same thing with the driver's seat on the back of the seat there. Down in the middle, there's your rear climate system. So I have it off right now because the car's off, but you can turn it on, you can go hot, you can go cold, you can put the air where you want it to, and you can see you have some choices. Now, technically this isn't coming in front of you to your chest. What it's doing is it's coming from above you in these pretty fancy vents up here. So you can open them up like that. You can close them around like that. You can adjust them around. So you can put them anywhere you want uh, to put it on you or away from you. And uh, you can sort of minimize and maximize that air there as well. So you do have um, quite a bit of flexibility back here, which makes the rear seating area really as featureful as the front seat area. Now I am on a bench seat here, so there is an armrest I can pop down. Armrest pops down there. Gonna be honest with you, the armrest is sitting too low right now. It's kind of on a declined angle instead of level like that. So we're gonna fix that by tilting my seat here. So 60-40 split, you could tilt the seats there if you wanted to. So now I'm comfortable. I've just taken space out of my third row seat though, and that's gonna matter because we're gonna go sit back there. So what I could do, if you see, if I put the armrest up for a second here, you can see that I am very comfortable on the seat. My leg is flush. I've got leg rooms galore, lots of foot room underneath the seat there as well, like a lot of foot room underneath the seat. And you can see that my knee room is tremendous. So what I can do, if I wanna create more space in the back seat, is I can move this seat further up like this. Now, this far, this is as far as it goes forward. So when we go fully forward, I'm a six footer sitting behind myself. I still have as much, maybe even more space than I would in something like a Santa Cruz, which I own. Um, so I'm gonna split the difference. Let's, well, let's not even split the difference. Let's put this seat 
full back. So you've got a six footer sitting in the front. You've got like a seven footer sitting back here. And then we're gonna go see if I fit in the third row seat. So let's do that right now. So we're gonna leave this, this side of the car here because we want this seat to stay full back, which means the 60% of the seat is gonna be full back to create the least possible leg room in the back. So let's just jump around over here and I'll show you both seats do the same thing. Come on camera, come around, there we go. Okay, so as we come around here, what I like about these seats is, again, 60-40 split. You can just press this button here to come back. Now remember, that seat can also be tilted further forward, but I put it back for my comfort. So there we go, push that button there, it goes forward, it could go a hair more forward than that. What's cool is there's a step here and a step there to get in. So you can have, if your little feet, I have a little bit bigger feet, so I can just do it in one step. But if you're little, let me just show you me coming in. Oh, there I am. Uh, easy, easy, easy to get back here. You know, if you've ever climbed, if you've climbed in the back of a uh, two-door car in the past, no problem. So remember, the seat here that I'm sitting, gonna sit behind in a second, is tilted further than it needs to be, and certainly brought back probably eight inches further than it needs to be to have a six-footer. But check this out. This is what kind of amazes me. Over here, I fit. My knees are touching here, but even as a six-footer, I fit. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna press this button here to push that seat forward. And now we're gonna tilt it back. There we go. Now I've kind of split the difference. Actually, that's still a little too far forward. But again, you can see the big benefit there. It is too far forward. Now, as an adult, my legs are not on the seat, but I could sit back here comfortably with all the leg room I need. I can recline these seats a little bit further back if I need to, and I easily fit. Headroom, no problem. So who's sitting back here? Child seats, these are child seat compatible. If you have uh, teenagers, they probably won't care. If you have grandma, Maybe she's smaller, she might not care. Uh, if you have a very tall grandpa or someone with like a back like mine or some injuries that I have, you may not wanna be back here forever, but certainly this is comfortable for an hour long trip for someone my size. Uh, if we're doing a day trip, you're gonna to wanna to keep the full size adults in the front five seats and leave these three seats back here because there are three of them two smaller people who don't mind having a little bit less space. It's not minivan size back here but it's pretty close. And I think for a lot of people it won't matter. And the why it's not gonna matter, you still have a USB port back here for your rear seat passengers and a couple cup holders. And that USB port alone is probably enough to just keep that person uh, quiet and happy back here. So can I get out of here easily? You bet I can. So I'll just keep it filming on me here. You get to see my bald head and it's pretty easy for me to climb out, even though I currently have a sore back from doing dumb things that I shouldn't have done, uh, but it's pretty good back there. So. Trunk space, let's uh, take a look at that. Not a powered tailgate, which I am totally fine with. I don't think that is worth the money to someone like me. Uh, first of all, one thing I kind of forget to point out all the time, you can really clear, come on camera, you can really clear the space here. It's hard to show you, but there's a lot of space here above my head. So again, as a six footer with shoes on here, um, there's plenty of space for me to stand underneath there, which I think is a a thing I need to do more often. So like I said, you can put child seats back here to there and there you can put a child seat. This side is not equipped for that. We're gonna take the floor mats to put them out there for a second. Now, if these seats fold down, well, let's just leave them up for a second, but if they, um, we'll talk about if they fold down. First of all, let's look underneath here. There is your cargo cover. Remember we did a cargo cover video? If you haven't seen our cargo cover or secrets of your cargo cover video, you need to see this because that cargo cover can mount over here. So go watch our secrets of your cargo cover video as soon as you're done this one here. Cargo cover can mount up there and when these seats are down, which we're gonna put them down right now, actually, you know what, we'll leave it up for a second, but when, when they're down, you can stick your cargo cover up there and cover your cargo even in this sort of entry level vehicle. The reason we left the seats up just briefly is because we're gonna take our teddy bear here. Teddy bear does not fit in something like a, um, well, Sorrento with a third row seat. Uh, Santa Fe doesn't really have a third row seat. Uh, but Teddy Bear is a tight squeeze. If he didn't have this arm here, he would fit perfectly uh, in there. So he does fit behind the third row seats, which is quite a bit of space. And then if you put the seats down, which we'll do here. Whoops, I just uh, slammed that hard and I didn't put the strap on the Velcro. And I like to be sort of really particular about that. So pull this down here and all the way. And you can see I can sort of recline that seat there, slam down there. And you can see that the seats sit flat. Now, that seat, again, could come back a long ways, but we're just gonna put Teddy Bear, you know, up where he would be, you know, when uh, the seat was full back. If it is full back, 
easily a two teddy bear truck. There's a ton of space back here, uh, probably more than that. Uh, you could almost stack two and a half tall as well. So just the reason for buying this car is all of the space. If you only have five people you need to take on a long vacation, you have immense trunk space back here. If you have, if you need to use the third row seats, you still got roof rails, even on the base model, which doesn't always happen on base models, but you've got really long roof rails here. You could put a kayak up there. You could put a cargo box up there, a cargo cage. You could put a lot of stuff. And again, if you're mounting a kayak, this is a long roof. You can mount the one piece there, the one piece there, and you almost don't have to have um, front and rear tie down straps because you've got such big spread there. So overall, as like a family vacation vehicle, the all wheel drive, the terrain modes, the terrain modes are mud, snow and sand. Um, the overall size inside, the comfort, the smart cruise control. I didn't talk about the smart cruise control a lot, but smart cruise control can keep the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you. I better take Teddy Bear out of here, otherwise I'll forget him. But smart cruise control can keep the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you. And uh, look at Ted's there, he looks great. Uh, and that is really nice on a long road trip. So if you're thinking about this as your daily drive around town vehicle, not a problem, but it's probably also gonna be your longer road trip vehicle. And that's where I think this vehicle really shines. It's very comfortable. It's got just the right features and options for the type of use that I think a lot of people are gonna use this for. And it just makes a lot of sense. So, all right, let's jump into your questions again. And then I wanna show you some lighting. We'll show you a couple other little features as we go around. And if you have questions, we'll take some time for them as well. Uh, we're moving through a little quicker than normal. And that's just probably because there's a little bit less technology to talk about in this car. Someone says, I'm looking to up upgrade. Oh, somebody says no spare. It'll have a spare because there's a jack in there. So the, um, the spare is mounted underneath the vehicle and there'll be a little pin that you pull a plastic pin and you can spin the um, lug nut uh, wrench in there. It'll lower your spare tire. So it's in behind there. So it does have a spare tire, uh, which I know people will want on a vehicle this size. Uh, not a big deal. It has a spare tire there. Okay. Okay. So I didn't realize that they would do, okay. I'm not sure what that comment was about. Okay, how much, I don't know. Somebody's asking me the price of a Pathfinder. I don't know. Go to the guy who makes Pathfinder videos. I don't make Pathfinder videos, I'm not sure. Please show the engine bay, I can do that. Uh, okay, Sportage doesn't have that option. Oh, you guys are having a conversation here. So remind, for Mimi and Orion Enigma, uh, if there's something I need to know in your conversation there, uh, feel free to write at the end of the comments there and I'll try to make sense of it. I'm, there's a lot of comment there that I don't have time to read right now. Smart cruise control works great. Uh, you're having a combo in, the, combo in the comments, sorry. Yeah, not a problem to have a conversation. Just if there's a question in there that I need to know about, let me know again in the bottom. Uh, there we go. Someone says they're hoping for a Tucson PHEV. Yeah, me too. Can you get the power lift gate and then still stay with the cloth seats? Ah, that's a good question. Off the top of my head, I don't know. I feel like the answer is no. Uh, but I don't know for sure off the top of my head. Somebody says, is the engine the same as a Telluride? What's the difference? Uh, no real difference. 3.8 liter V6, 291 horsepower, uh, 262 foot-pounds of torque, same power number, same size engine. It's the same engine, so it's the same piece. So uh, that's what we've got there. Uh, da, 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 da. So you guys are talking about two Bluetooth discussions? Oh, you guys don't have to apologize. So you guys are, a couple people are apologizing for having a conversation. I don't mind if you guys have conversations as long as they're not inappropriate, which I know with you two, they aren't. Um, but just if there's a question there, just let me know because I, I don't read the conversations. I try to look for questions. All right, let's pop the hood because somebody asked to pop the hood. And we'll do that right here. I should point out as well, there's a couple things I like. It's got the backup camera, which some people think is great, but it's mandated by law. So everything has a backup camera. But in a vehicle of this size, you know, it, and if you've got eight people in there, like there can be eight people in there, you might be distracted backing up. So it does have the backup beepers. These are little sensors here, and it's gonna beep progressively quicker as you come up to something. And I'm the guy who drove over his daughter's scooter because I didn't see it uh, when I should have seen it. And the beepers are just little things that can give you an extra little warning when you're not paying as much attention as you probably should. And uh, this car has that, so I really like that. Can I get a Hyundai Telluride? Hyundai Telluride with leather interior. There is no Hyundai Telluride. There's a Hyundai, there's a Telluride. Tellurides have leather. Um, but that's a Kia and the Hyundai is a Palisade. All right, underneath the hood, you guys wanted to see it here. I don't usually show this because basically all we're showing is 
whatever artist designed this lovely plastic panel, that's what you're gonna see. Um, so everything's pretty easy to get to out here. Again, it's a large vehicle. It easily fits everything that it needs. Here's the only thing you should probably be doing here. Everything else you can just sort of leave to your uh, Hyundai certified factory trained technician. So we're gonna shut the hood for a second. I do wanna show you lighting on this car. Oh, one thing that is nice, even on a base level vehicle, they do have the support. So you don't have a uh, stick to put up a prop rod. You do have the uh, sort of supports, which makes it easier to show everything. I'm gonna slam that down there. All right, let's just turn the lights on here and we'll go through the high beams on this car are um, auto high beams, which is nice to have. Now I say that, I better make 100% sure. Yes, no, hold on. Oh boy, did I lie? No, I didn't lie. Okay, good. There we go. So I didn't lie. So we're gonna leave it on the auto setting right now, uh, which will be enough. And we'll signal just one signal to the left here, just so we can show that. Over here in the mirrors, you do not have a signal. That would be on the higher trim. So there are a couple differences to identify this. In addition to the 18 inch wheels, which you would have up to 20s on other models, um, you do also have no signals there. Out front here, it is an LED signal light there, which I think is interesting. Not everybody knows or would assume that an LED would be on the lowest, lower trim levels. You do have this big kind of, it looks like a single panel, but it wraps behind the paint there. Of um, So again, big sort of, it is large. It's hard to explain how large it is. You know, there's my hand here. Uh, so it's just a big panel there of... Um, or daytime running light. And then of course, LED headlights here, which you can see are blazingly bright when you get down to them. So I really like to see that. You can see the lower trim lines here have a more metallic kind of look. There are different uh, looks throughout the whole uh, uh, grills and different trim lines. And again, thing with LED headlights, you get that natural daylight color. It does not film properly here. I see bright white in the camera here. It looks a lot more yellow, but nice sharp cutoff with the bright light there. Coming back to the rear lights here. There's the rear tail lights right there. And you guys have always said that you prefer to see your signal lights in the lighting cluster. And they are in this vehicle in that cluster and uh, just regular signal lights there instead of the amber ones. Of course, the third row brake light is up there as well. So there's full lighting, full kind of review of this vehicle. Again, I think it's just a really good vehicle for families. Uh, it seems to me to make all the right compromises. Like I said, the only thing I'd li really like to see is, um, is the uh, keyless entry at this price point. I think when you get to a certain price point, it should just be keyless entry. Um, and you know, maybe I'm alone in that. Maybe some other people think it differently, but the key's not the end of the world. It just, you know, I think that's what it should be. So we got 74 people on right now. We hit 50 likes, 50, I think 60 was our goal. We hit 50. Um, so let's see if we can get 10 more likes. Uh, the 74 people on, that'll be about three, four, five, probably five, 600 people on on this video throughout the half hour while we're live. Um, be really cool if we could just like, I don't know, get to 60 likes. That was our goal halfway through. How hard, hard does it to change the bulbs? No idea. They are LED lights. They probably won't have to be changed in the typical ownership period of these vehicles. Um, if they're LEDs out back, they're probably pretty simple, uh, but I don't change lights here. They don't let me work with tools. They let me work with the camera. They let me talk to people. Uh, they don't trust me with anything important. So, okay, 65 miles per hour is 100 kilometers. Yeah, 62 point something. So 62.5 or so is 100 kilometers. Um, so what are we looking at for speed here? I'm, I'm reading some comments, but I'm out of context here. So um, uh, can we contact you? I would like to buy my next car with you guys. If you are in Ontario, absolutely contact me. In every other live video we've done so far, there's already a link that says reach out to me. Um, I will put that up on this one once we're finished the video and doing that. So you can reach out to me. And if you're in Ontario, we'll connect you up with our sales team. They'll take care of you. Will there be fog lights on the Hyundai? So on this one, there's not fog lights. To be very blunt, I'm not sure that fog lights add a lot of light in the difference between or in the um when you get these led lighting so once you have this proper led lighting like we have here oops let me get that there uh you don't add a ton of light so on my santa cruz is a good example my hyundai santa cruz with no fog lights has a much broader whiter light than my kia soul with leds and led fog lights um, so when you get to these higher end lighting systems Sometimes adding fog lights doesn't add enough light to make any difference to people. Um, certainly in my Santa Cruz, it's excellent to spread a light, the coverage of light uh, with those proper high, high beams there. Uh, somebody asked about the difference between miles per hour and kilometers an hour. Yeah, okay, so basically uh, 50 is 80. 50 miles an hour is 80 kilometers an hour. 100 is about 62 or so, so there we go. Can I get the Bose audio system in a Hyundai Palisade? You can get a premium audio system. I feel like it's not the Bose audio system. I feel like on the Hyundai, it is a Harman Kardon. 
on the Palisade. I know you can get the Bose audio in the Santa Cruz. They kind of have a mix between Harman Kardon and um, actually Harman Kardon Infinity Systems and uh, Bose audio. So I don't think this is the Bose in this one here. Will Kia ever stick to just one brand of sound system? I doubt it because think about it from the sound system people, right? What they prop, this is how I assume it works and maybe I'm completely wrong, but I'm assuming like Bose comes to them and says, we will put Bose audios in all of your hundreds of thousands or millions of vehicles that you produce um, at this price. And then Harman Kardon says, okay, we'll come in at this price and both. So I assume that's probably how it's made. Um, and whoever wins is probably who wins. We are in Lynchburg, Hyundai in Lynchburg, Virginia. If you are in Virginia, uh, we can't help you. We don't have any American stores right now. What is more trunk space, the Telluride or Palisade? They're gonna be very similar. There, there's probably a thing online that measures the liters of cargo space. Um, the liters or cubic feet may vary a little bit just by the way the plastics are curved around, but they are essentially the same, practically speaking. If you can fit your camping gear in a Telluride, you can fit your camping gear in a Palisade. Uh, there's going to be no practical advantage, even if one has a spec advantage here or there. And it's the same thing with like length, width, and height. Um, they're all going to be slightly different length, width, and height potentially, um, but there's no practical difference in driving it. They're all the same. Uh, all right. Top trim, Palisade are powered. Top trim, Telluride are manual. So what are we talking about with... Um Oh, third row seating. That's true. So in the Palisade, the third row seat, whoop, that didn't want to do that. I want to do this. Third row seats in the Palisade in the tire trim, you press a button and they, they electrically go down. Whereas in the Telluride, they are manual. We should probably do a Telluride versus Palisade comparison. Uh, we shied away from some of those comparisons, but there are certain trims that it's fair to do it between. Uh, so we could probably do that, but we have to be careful with the um, mixing up trim lines because sometimes certain vehicles win on video where they may not win overall. Uh, like Seltos and Kona are very similar, um, but the Seltos is larger. So some people view that as a win on video, whereas I'm not sure it is for everybody. It just, if you want more space, it is larger. Uh, so we just, sometimes I like to make the star of the show whatever that vehicle is, and that's why we don't always compare between brands. All right, somebody's yelling Telluride. Okay, um, when you when are you going to get the new Sportage, uh, which is Sportage in Canada, Sportage? Uh, first quarter of next year, uh, 2022, is that's what we're planning for. And that should be our number two seller next year. So we should have that in large volumes. All right, I think I covered most of your questions. If there's something I missed, let me know. Um, somebody's telling me we need two more likes for 50, but I think he means we have 62 likes. Um, so we have 62, at least on my count. So I appreciate you guys liking the video and helping us out. Um, yeah, I think we're gonna leave it there. I do have a video coming. Oh, what's the number one seller for Kia? Uh, so they're, this is what they're predicting. They're predicting the Seltos will be number one next year. This is Kia Canada and what their predictions are. My understanding last time I heard was Seltos is predicting to be number one with Sportage number two seller. Uh, certainly the volume for the Kia brand is gonna be Forte, Seltos, Sportage, Sorento. We have all the other vehicles, but the volume is probably going to be there in part because of shortages and other stuff as well. I think the Carnival would do a lot better if we could get a, if we could get enough. But currently, there's so many Carnivals on order. I think we're going to fill those orders. Uh, if we could just have those not as sold orders, we'd probably have that as a volume vehicle as well next year. So you'll see a lot of Carnivals next year. We just won't be able to sell as many as you see. Does that make sense? Uh, and then Hyundai, they have their volume trims as well. I haven't seen the stats on that just recently, so we'll do that. Um, how are the sedans doing? Are they dying out? Yeah, you guys aren't buying sedans. Uh, uh, they don't make us, I mean, you still have Elantra, you still have the um, uh, Sonata, K5, Forte, those are all sedans and we do well with them, but a lot of manufacturers out here have abandoned the class altogether. Chrysler, Ford, GM, we really don't have anything that competes with the sedans that we have here. Carnival all-wheel drive, I doubt it. Um, probably not gonna happen. I think the Carnival will go through uh, its life as it is. Um, and then I think, yeah, the next step is, uh, all -wheel, is probably going to be electrified platforms from there. And of course those will have all wheel drive, but, uh, we'll talk about that if they come out. All right. We're going to leave it right like that. Uh, we've gone a long time here. I want to thank you. We've got 64 likes. So thanks everybody for joining us. Uh, tomorrow we will have a video, hopefully in the morning that a lot of you guys have been waiting for. So, uh, we'll talk about that on my Instagram account as well as on YouTube tomorrow morning. We'll be again live at two o'clock. We got a couple new Fortes coming in very soon, next little while. I uh, might throw a Stinger back in here. Stinger Scorpion might have that back in here tomorrow for Friday. So Fridays are fun days. So we'll talk to you guys all again tomorrow. Thanks everybody for joining us. We'll see you again tomorrow.